I-29 is a popular stretch of interstate that runs from Kansas City, Missouri, all the way to the tip of North Dakota. But if you're looking at the particular portion that runs just through the Dakotas, you'll notice an interesting theme that ends with trophies. It's a common phrase that success is paved with blood, sweat, and tears. Although 16s that live in the Dakotas may agree, they might also suggest success is paved on Interstate 29. Six schools within a span of 376 miles have all won championships during the 2015-16 season. From Grand Forks, North Dakota, all the way down to Vermilion, South Dakota, that's a five-hour and 37-minute difference with four trophies in between. Six universities share the same roads, the winning road, and I-29. Starting in North Dakota, these two schools are very familiar with banners and bright lights. UND Hockey added its eighth national hockey championship this season after dominating the NCAA playoffs and ending their season at the Frozen Four in Tampa, Florida with a 4-2 win over Denver and a 5-1 win over Quinnipiac. For five players on UND's hockey team, the dream season didn't just end with a trophy, but ended in contracts with the NHL. Just an hour and a half south of the Ralph stands the Fargo Dome, home to the NDSU Bison. Over their storied history, the Herd has won 13 national titles and are the first football program to have won five consecutive national championships. Their most recent victory in Frisco, Texas, was against Jacksonville State and was at the hand of the NFL's second overall draft pick and now Philadelphia Eagle Carson Wentz. 2011, 12, 13, 14, and 15 all strung together with rings. 190 miles south and one border away is Brookings, South Dakota, and although no national title was won this year, the publicity from the hardwood was enough to catch the eye of America. Both the men and women's basketball teams won the Summit League Championship and made the NCAA tournament. The men's team lost to Maryland, one of the highest graded number five seeds of the tournament. The women's team beat their number five seed Miami 74 to 71 and were one point away from a spot in the Sweet 16 before falling to Stanford. A legacy of hoops and hardware with a combined 10 conference titles has defined SDSU basketball over the past eight years. Sioux Falls, another point of interest on I-29, made headlines earlier in the season after the Division II Augustana men's basketball team beat Big Ten Iowa on a last-second buzzer beater. An unbelievable shot foreshadowed much of their season. Like the Bison from Fargo, a trip to Frisco would become even more memorable with a shower of confetti, 36 games, and only two losses later, their program's first national championship. Another hour south brings you to Coyote Town in Vermilion. The women's basketball team was a Summit League favorite heading into the conference tournament. After beating SDSU twice earlier in the season, a Summit League title was in sight. The conference championship didn't end how the Yotes expected, but their season ended up being much more than they ever could have hoped. They entered the WNIT with a new focus and rolled over Creighton, Minnesota, Northern Iowa, Western Kentucky, and Oregon. A season Season woven with guts, glory, and grit turned a season disappointment into one of the greatest basketball runs in South Dakota history. A win over Florida Gulf Coast University 71 to 65 for the WNIT championship. It was a moment of redemption that left an even deeper impression on the national stage, providing evidence that mid majors are a force to be feared. Six championships from six different teams that all align like stars on a stretch of interstate in the Midwest. And although segregated by school colors, fight songs, and culture, their seasons are all brought together by applause, praise, and gravel.